Okay, you've made it to fall, uh, and it is almost time to plant. Um, we are on a dairy farm now where we're going to be planting a buffer um, in about two weeks. Um, you don't have to do this step here, but I really like to do it this way, where I like to put a pin flag at the location where every single tree is going to be going on the property. Um, that gives me enough time a couple weeks usually uh, to make any changes, any adjustments um, to the number of species. If I need to order a few more, you know, uh, emergency, get, get some more supply. Um, if I need to do some site prep that I wasn't anticipating. Also, it gives the landowner time to see exactly what it'll look like in the real world. Um, I have noticed that landowners, uh, not everyone is as good as using maps at, at people who kind of look at them professionally, you know, so it's good to lay things out um, for everyone uh, beforehand. And it makes the day of the planting really easy. Um, the layout does not have to be very challenging. Um, I know my pacing really well. Um, part of that, you know, comes with practice, but I have a little tool, um, a homemade uh, uh, tool to help with the flagging. So it's just a rope that I put um, electrical tape every five feet. So um, I alternated colors um, just to help if two people are doing it at the same time and you're on opposite ends. If you both flag on red, say, then when you meet in the middle, you'll have the right, you know, um, period uh, between each or the right spacing between each. Um, so I'll just demonstrate real quick how to do that. Um, some things to consider here with the layout. We have a fence that we do not want to get very close to the fence. We want to be a mower's width away from the fence and then plus some. Additionally, there is a wetland fringe here between the stream um, and us. So actually we're not gonna flag all the way to the edge of the stream. We're going to flag kind of towards the end of that, uh, to the edge of that wetland. Um, so first we'll see distance from the fence. Um, I'll go ahead and, so that's about 10 feet right there where I just stepped. So that'll kind of be where we'll say maybe a little bit closer than 10 feet. Um, this landowner has a six foot mower deck and then we'll use our rope. So I can hold that over the, there we go. And then, so it is nice to have with multiple people. And then you'll just pull it as far as you need to go. I don't need to flag this whole site for y'all. But the nice thing about this rope is that it makes it easy to follow contours. Um, so again, I know red is where that flag was placed. So all you have to do is go down the line, put a flag in uh, where the red ones are. Then to do the second row, you could either move that around, but again, I know my pacing. And if you want to use the rope to start, then you'll get to know your pacing. So 10 feet here is red to red. So for me, that is one full pace, two steps. So I know if I'm doing a 10 foot by 10 foot spacing, all I have to do is come out this way. There's my 10 feet. I'm in that wetland fringe. So I'm gonna go up to the edge, put in the flag there and kind of follow the contour. And then the same with the third row uh, and so on until we're flagged. And now we have plenty of notice um, for the landowner, plenty of notice for us to make sure we can get everything set up very efficiently uh, and prepped um, before it comes time to plant. A uh, frequent issue that you'll have when laying out a riparian forest buffer is that there are some trees in the area where you're planting. Not enough trees to make it a forest, so we have to reforest it, um, but there are going to be scattered trees. Um, and then the question is, what do you do with them? What I like to do um, is try to plan the rows so that that existing cover is in line with the row. And so you can see here, um, our stream kind of curves through here. And so our row of trees is going this way. Um, and there happened to be a lovely red osier dogwood um, right in the way. So I built that in to the row, and then the row will continue after that red osier dogwood. You'll see there are some trees here. Uh, we have a lovely <laughs> Bradford pear, that's sarcasm, by the way, to clarify, um, that is gonna be, would be in the middle of the row. Because it's a Bradford pear, we're going to kill it. We're gonna remove it anyway, um, so we don't have to worry about that. The guy who's mowing can just zip right through. Um, there is a little red maple here um, that's really, really beat up. You can see it's been, uh, the base has been hit several times. 
So I actually am gonna ask the grounds crew what they want me to do here. Um, their mower, I think, could barely fit between the tree that's gonna go here and this red maple, but because it's, it's going to die very soon from all the damage to its base, um, I might just remove that so that, again, the, the guys can just zip right through with their mower and we don't have to worry about any confrontation there. Thank you. 